I'd like to dedicate this song to my dear friend, Colin Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. <clears throat> my phone dings. It is Tinder. Is he one to remember? A beautiful sight if he's Mr. Right. Waiting for my winter wonder man. Gone away is my old boo here to stay i don't know who will he have a big dong will we get along waiting for my winter wonder man in the bedroom i will mount his snowman and pretend that i like going down i'll say let's get married he'll say no ma'am I'll just hit you up when I'm in town. Cuffing time is upon us, so my heart is just pure mush. I've been single so long, please don't call me strong. Waiting for my winter wonder man. My phone dings, this time it's hinge in the middle of my show binge in sweatpants and crumbs i look like a bum waiting for my winter wonder man gone away is my old boo they all say you'll find a new so i swipe away every day waiting for my winter wonder man in the meantime, I'm accepting DMs from hot men who still are in their prime. Miss me if you have a wife or girlfriend. I'm 33 and I don't have the time. Later on, I'll have my guy. My vagine will never be dry. My face on his face while I'm wearing lace. Waiting for my winter wonder man. Waiting for my winter wonder man. It's time for the rocket. Welcome to the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. Party God Squad, did you have a good week? Here's hoping, baby. I started my week in Jamaica celebrating my girl Kara's birthday and ended my week celebrating her and my other sweet mama Katie's joint birthday at Brooklyn Bowl 90s night. The two of them celebrate their birthdays together and it is just the best. My friend group is amazing, man. Now I'm just talking to you, the gang. We wrecked that dance floor last night. Everyone wanted a piece of our energy and our vibe, and you know it's true. Party God Squad, I'm not saying this to be cocky. I'm telling you this because if your friend group doesn't ignite electricity in your soul or doesn't leave you charged up like a battery pack going to Mars, get better friends. Find your vibrational tribe. It's the fountain of youth. May we always be the most righteous chuggies on the dance floor. When I was in Jamaica earlier this week, I was alone by the pool on my computer at night and I could see the ocean. I so badly wanted to walk over there and smoke my joint and watch the waves crash alone. And then I remembered, bitch, Kim Kardashian got robbed at gunpoint in her own room in a luxury hotel in Paris, France. We ain't safe, people. You gotta watch out for yourself. Thank God I'm half black. My white side was really pulling a intro to every missing person show ever trying to get me over to that water. The system me one hand it. No, sir. Thank you, queen, for keeping the duality of my identity and body safe alone in another country. As a thank you, I promise to stop suggesting to my friends that we go on camping trips. You know what I wish they'd invent? 
an electric fence, but for humans who have no business going into Chipotle multiple times a week. I'm a human who went to Chipotle multiple times this week. Nothing harsh, just a zap. Enough to turn you around. The future is bright, though. They got Keurigs for weed, goddammit. Last night, I stuffed a raw cone with weed from a plastic baggie at 3 in the morning in the back seat of my friend's truck. So this innovation in marijuana is on my wish list. A Keurig for weed. And people say civilization is crumbling. I'd like to give a special shout out to my friend Coco, a.k.a. Courtney, and her happy relationship. She's someone I've been friends with for 12 and a half years. She's my neighbor, and she looks out for me, and vice versa, of course, of course. Friday night, we're sitting on couchy. That's my couch. We're having laughs. We're having a wine night, and we start talking about a mutual friend from college. And I said, yeah, you know, I like them, but it's weird. They don't follow me back on Instagram. And she said, oh my God, really? Let me see if they follow me. And then she pulled up their Instagram, looked me dead in my eyes and said, how do I see if they follow me? She said that with a pure heart and all the sincerity in the world. If you are our age and don't know how to stalk on Instagram, you got a happy relationship, people. Keep on trucking, Courtney and Andy. Keep on trucking. That brings us to Rocky's Highest Thoughts, my most stoned thoughts of the week. This week, it was a high action with very little thought. I want to start this by saying I'm no role model and I don't aim to be. I don't advise anyone to do as I do, only to be entertained by me. And let's face it, are you not entertained? I... Uxnay Eadway out of a uh, Make a J because I would have rather been detained in Antigo May A Bay than live without that Jamaican good good. I'm a mule. Sorry, Yule May. Today is episode 54. It's also the final episode of season one of Wild Nights with Rocky Powell. For the last 54 weeks, every Monday, I have released a new episode. It's about to get real award speechy in here, so get them tissues ready, baby. When I started this podcast, I didn't know what to expect. All I knew, and all I know, is that I'm an entertainer since I could walk. Through COVID, everyone's world stopped. And so did my auditions. So did my twice a week in person in New York City live improv shows. I was at a loss on how to put myself out there and fill my creativity void. I'm also so social. I love parties. I love people. I love fun. In fact, I'm missing two parties right now and it's honestly killing me. Shout out to Kaylee and shout out to Brad. But this show is my baby. She's been my priority for a little over a year, and every week I've done everything I can to make sure Wild Nights feels the love I have for her. I've sat at my computer for hours a day, networking, recording, editing, emailing, just trying to get my show out there. And even with all the hard work I've put in and all the alone time I've spent getting her off the ground, I could not have done this without my amazing support system. Mom, Dad... Thank you for making sure that I know you're proud of me. I hear you and I feel it. Mom, I know how the show breaks up your Monday night drive home and I love getting your another great one, babe, text. Dad, sorry for any time you had to hear about me having sex with some undeserving white boy, but you know we keep so on it. Skills, thank you for all the recordings you let me do in your room. Thank you for encouraging me and putting your blood, sweat, and tears into creating the Rocky Rundown. You were 100% right about the down. It's really cool to have a brother who gets it. John Boy, thank you for listening to my openings, sometimes before, sometimes after they were recorded. Thank you for putting up with me doing interviews in the kitchen. Thank you for doing the cover photo. I can't wait to use your eye in the future. My family for listening, all of your unprompted texts just letting me know you listened and things you liked about the episodes and it just really reassured me that I have something great here and you aren't just listening out of obligation. 
and for all the Sundays we've spent together where I get to sit around my family while everyone's hanging out and having a good time and everyone lets me edit because you know I want to be a part of the mix but I also have to get my work done. I get FOMO so I like to be in the mix. Kaylee girl for all your podcast wisdom. I love that we both share this passion and I love you. To all my friends who let me share our wild nights, thank you for listening as well as helping make the memories. Thanks for the text with the pictures of your Spotify wrapped showing me that I was your number one podcast. If I had just received one screenshot from one of you, that would have been enough, but from all the girls, it means the whole world. To every guest who shared their time and their stories, I hope you had as much fun as I did. A lot of you didn't even know me, and you just took a chance on doing my show, and I'll never forget it, and you definitely have a friend in me. Some podcasts I'd like to shout out. And since we are on a break until January, if you've listened to all my episodes and you need to start a new podcast, any of these will quench that thirst. These are podcasts who've not only become podcasts I enjoy listening to, but friends of mine, and they've been super supportive to me throughout my first year. Underrated, Social Animals, Drinkin' and Dishin, Impolite Society, The Hot Mess Comedy Hour, The Manic Pixie Weirdo, Random Convos from the Couch, Jake and the Dingus, Decaying with the Boys, Reinvention Rebels, and last but not least... My podcast bestie, Corey Easley, host of Corey Has a Podcast. Corey, thank you so much for constantly lifting me up and for the shout outs. I am so grateful for the way our friendship has grown this year. Such a pleasant surprise. And listen to me. I am always rooting for you. I love seeing you win. So keep it up. Apologies if I forgot anyone. And I just want to say that the indie podcast community, especially on Twitter, is the absolute best. And last but not least the party god squad wow you're amazing i cannot wait to deliver more content thank you for sharing thank you for writing reviews and listening each and every week i am beside myself and you've loved my poems and my stories and my songs and there is no wild nights without the party god squad so rage on baby you can feel free to write me an email if you have something to say wild nights with rocky at gmail.com i would love to hear from you To anyone who may want to follow a less conventional, more creative path or any path that lights a fire under you, do it. This feels unreal and I've never felt more like myself in my entire life. You can feel this way too if you just follow what you love. It's hard, but it's also that easy. And before you know it, a year will go by and you'll have a lot to show for it. So just do it. Oh, and Lil Rocky, it's all worth it. And it'll all continue to be worth it. Fan that fire, baby girl. It is only the beginning. My guest this week is the motherfucking queen of queens, Suni Reyes. Comedian, actress, improviser, writer, stand-up. Her wild word was Mary Jane, and you know I'm Rick James, bitch. Because I'm in love with Mary Jane. She's my main thing. But Suni came to the right place to tell her Wild Night story. Because it's the season finale, that is all the more reason to like and to share and to subscribe to the podcast. You can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Wild Nights with Rocky, on Twitter at Wild Nights Pod. If you haven't done so already, write me a review. It changes the game and it really helps me out. If you want to see extended interviews with all of my guests, they are on YouTube, so please subscribe there as well. If you have a favorite episode while we're on our little break, share it and tag me. I will 100% reshare it. If you can, tell one friend about the show who doesn't listen and let's grow the Party God Squad, baby. I'm coming in hot for season two with a monster guest. And I'm ending season one with a monster guest as well. So please, enjoy my Wild Nights conversation with the one, the only, Suni Reyes. Suni, welcome. Thank you for doing the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited because 
you are just such a bright light. And I feel like you and I have been orbiting around each other in the comedy community for very many years now, but we've never really had like a one-on-one hang. Um, Abina's a Mars energy, baby. Yes, yes. So I'm I'm like so honored to have you on the show. And uh, you are the season finale of season one. So this yes. is, this is we so- survived. We survived, baby. So this is so exciting. Um, How are you feeling winding up going into the new year uh please 2022 get here i mm-hmm. cannot wait for 2022 to get here any quicker <laughs> like i'm yeah. so ready and you know what i mean like it's just i don't know everything is a blur but i'm ready for 2022 i think i am too i think i am too i wish i i i'm a big person i like to relax a lot when i uh, i haven't been able to relax in december it's been so hectic so far yeah same but I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to January so I can just roll up on my couch with a little bit of right. Jane. <laughs> okay. 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 So Sudi's wild word was Mary Jane. Um, I already know I'm going to love where this story is going. So the floor is yours. Give us your wild night story, Mary Jane. <laughs> All right. This is not because honestly, let me disclaimer out there. I haven't had a real wild night in like decades. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a mom. So it's been, you know, the wild nights of uh, cleaning and cooking. Like yes. it has to be like really, you know, that <laughs> wild in a while. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, a few years ago, um, <laughs> The day turned into a wild night. Okay. okay. I um I live in Queens and near my neighborhood there was a, a fellow comedian that used to live uh very close to me. And we used to like bump into each other sometimes when I'm walking my dog. And um, you know, like it was just very casual or whatever. Yeah. And then we were put on a on a, on the same sketch team and we got a little bit closer you know and yeah. um there was this one day uh right before i was going to get my son pick up my son from school i was walking my dog and i bumped into him and he's like hey dude what's up I'm, like, I'm 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 running late to pick up my son from school yeah. oh yeah no worries no worries how's everything going i'm like i'm just tired and stressed and exhausted like you know someone asks you how you do and you should not say any of these things yeah <laughs> But, but I just felt like it. It was like, you know, a long day, long week, long year, probably. And now also, this is a friend. Like at this point, you know, it's not just a, hey, hi, this person knows you a little bit. So you felt like right. you could be honest. Right. But it's still a comedy friend where, you know, like, yeah. it's just, hey, let's do the show, <laughs> then drink and bye-bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I no one wants to hear it. And there was no, you know, no one really wants to hear from uh, funny parents. Like yeah. no one wants to know about the whole the whole ordeal, but he was cool. And I was like, yeah, I'm just like, I, I just need, I just need a break. And he's yeah. like, girl, I just bought some brownies. So like, if you want, I can give you one. I'm like, like we brownie. And like, this is me, like, you know, who hasn't had like, yeah, and now, now <laughs> like over a decade. He's like, yeah, well, what, why would I be offering you regular brownies? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Not a fucking Girl Scout. <laughs> They're like, maybe the sugar will help me out. And, and I'm like, oh, damn. Yeah, why not? I, like, I was like, let me be a little naughty for a second. Like, yeah. should be fun. I'm on my way to pick up my son from school. What could happen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he gives me this thing that is not bigger than, than this. You know, just yeah. like a very small. A little bigger than a quarter size. A little bigger than a quarter, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like. I can handle this. It's fine. He, this guy is like twice my size. Mm-hmm. So, so I figure, okay, he probably eats the whole thing at once. I'm just going to eat half and I'll be fine. Right. We say goodbye. I'm like, I have to run. I have to go pick up my son, but thank you so much. This, this hopefully will relax. Yeah. Yeah. Take that. You're going to sleep like a baby tonight, baby. Yeah. All right. Good. I'm walking to get my son literally a block. The school is a block away. And I'm like, I'm going to hit this thing now because yeah. I just want to relax. Yeah. Okay. I eat half of this freaking brownie. By the time I turn the corner, the cars are flying. <gasps> Everything is in the air. 
The noises are paranoid me. I am like, someone is after me. Run. I yeah. start literally freaking out immediately. Like immediately. <laughs> but yeah, because I hadn't had lunch. Right. I spent all day <laughs> doing laundry, running around the city, running errands, came back to walk the dog and go get the kid. And I had not had lunch. So the brownie in my head was like, also like, oh, I'm having a little snack to pick me up, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, until I make, make lunch. No, Suni, this is not a regular brownie. Yeah. You are going to die. I literally thought I was going to die. I, I made it to the gate to pick up my son. And I'm, and I'm just like, let's go, let's go. Yeah, my mommy just needs to go. We just have to go right now. And this was he's... one block? It made One it... block. Do you think that there was any chance? Now, I've been there too, where they've kicked in like very quickly. Do you think there was any chance that you were like, I haven't done this in a while. I'm, ta I'm being a little bad that like there could have been some mental jumpage to it too, or it was all brownie. No, I was truly looking forward. I wasn't like, I wasn't like, Ooh, let me see what this, the outside. Oh, I want this to really do what he told me was going to do. Right, relax. relax. You were in the right but, mindset. Right. I was like, I just wanted to relax me and not, you know, not be stressed out. I'm, I'm pretty sure something was going on at that time. It's probably health insurance related, <laughs> yes. but it was something that I remember. It was very stressful, a very stressful time. And I was like, I just wanted to relax. I was like, oh, it's like weed. So like, yeah, relax me. Chill vibes. No girl. Like there were unicorns in my face. <laughs> Every noise was truly like it was like a um a hazard <laughs> like it was like it was like danger danger like I grabbed my son's hand so tight and I was like let's go he, he's like Are you okay yeah yeah just, just go home he was like seven at the time yeah so he had no idea like, what is going on of course we make it home and I literally run into the bathroom and just lock myself in the bathroom and start crying what oh, no. just crying just like yeah. oh my god Oh my God, I put my son in danger. Oh my yeah. God, no. Mommy, are you okay? Yeah. I am having a panic attack. Yeah. It's three o'clock and I am high as fuck. <laughs> I haven't been this high since college. Yeah. I'm just like, how am I going to make lunch and dinner and take care of these two things? Yeah. A dog yeah. and a freaking kid. Child. I, yeah. I come out and he's just playing. I'm like, great, continue playing. I managed to reheat whatever I had yeah. in the refrigerator, put it on the plate, and I just sit on the couch and just not move. Then I went from panicking, crying, to sitting and not moving. I just sat there for like another hour. I yeah. don't know what my son did in that time. I don't, <laughs> I'm very lucky he didn't call 911. I'm very yeah. lucky. <laughs> you know, he probably left the house and came back. I don't remember. I yeah. don't remember what happened i just sat there then the next emotion was like oh my god the fbi is coming they're taking my son away someone's called social services yeah i'm truly thinking that someone called social services like this you is new <laughs> no, like for real like that was my whole like i never i could never detach myself from motherhood even though i wanted to relax yeah. my trip was about people coming after me because i was yeah. a bad mother yeah what? nobody's even nobody even knows what's going on in the outside but you've created this whole story you see the van parked across the street you're like they got the wires tap in the house <laughs> literally literally i was like oh my god i turned i literally closed the the curtains and i turned the whole house was like completely covered i was like i don't want anyone to know what's happening in here yeah. i'm like this is not that's not you don't take brownies to get this paranoid about being a bad person you're supposed yes. to just relax I, I i started like thinking well i have to tell my husband now because he will find out when he gets home yeah <laughs> he was gonna be home like a, like an hour from the because it was like probably like four o'clock i texted my husband and i was like hey babe i'm so sorry but um i took a brownie and i'm not feeling good yeah and he texted me back a brownie from where like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. Do you have the runs? What's yeah. happening? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, my friend, um, he, um, he gave me one of his weed brownies. What? What friend? My husband doesn't know any of my comedy friends because yeah. he's never in my comedy circles because yeah. he's with the baby when I'm not at yeah. home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he's just like, who are you? 
from who's this friend why are you yes. doing when i'm not at home are you a drug dealer like <laughs> yeah 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 he's thinking his mind is going to the worst and you're meanwhile you're just like i just wanted a little brownie to relax <laughs> and i was like uh no like it was a wee brownie he's he's a cool guy you know like he, he would just start to help me out because i was so stressed out okay how much do you eat um half of it half of a brownie yeah. like are you kidding me i'm like it was tiny it was not big Sweetie, that's a lot like yeah Oh my God. I'm so, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll be home soon. I'm so sorry. It's fine. All right. Um, I tell my son, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay down. Daddy will be home soon. It, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. And I'm so sorry if anything happened. Okay. <laughs> I said, I said, I'm so sorry to my son so yeah. many times. He doesn't remember. He, he was like seven and yeah. right now he's 11. Like he doesn't remember, but I remember his face being like, what are you saying sorry for? Like, yeah, is, yeah. He never had, he never really clocked me. Like I was, I was in my mind, I was like, my son is going to be a crack baby. Like, this is it. <laughs> like, I, like, I, like I truly was like, it's over. Like I've ruined my life. They're going to take him away. And he never, he was like, my, like, what yeah. is wrong? <laughs> like everything is fine. Yeah. My husband finally gets home. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry. I put you both in danger. You didn't put anyone in danger. It's fine. The house it's is not weird. on fire. Not... No, no, no. They were coming after me. They were coming yeah. after me. Like, I know someone Someone knows that I did this and they're going to take him away. Suni, calm down. No one is going to take him. I'm literally telling my husband that they're going to take my son away. Yeah. He's like, go in the bedroom, stay there for the rest of the night. I'll take over. So this poor thing comes from work and has to like make dinner do the whole night routine with him, help him with homework, walk the dog again. I'm just like laying in bed. I haven't, again, I can't eat. I can't move. I'm just going from like paranoid to crying sad, like just sad. Yeah. Just like crying. He finally gets back in the bedroom and it's like, you know, now it's like probably like nine o'clock and I'm still high. Okay. This was at two. Yeah. This was two. It's 9 PM. I don't know. Is this normal or was I just that out of shape? I don't know. I think that sometimes edibles take you into another realm and they're so hard to gauge that you could be like, you could take an edible and then you could wake up like you like seven hours later and you can just be like, I'm still high. I, sometimes I have to remove myself from the situation. And I know people get tired of me saying this, but I get what's called the Rocky shakes. And I just start, if I get too high, I'm like from edibles, I'll be like, oh my God, get me out of here. Forth, I was like yeah. shaking and I couldn't control it. I was yeah. like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. But I, I really thought like when I took brownies in, you know, in college, like I don't remember, I don't remember being like, it was like, well, first of all, I took them at night. So yeah. I don't know, you know, that whole thing of like seeing the daylight and then going into nighttime <laughs> really fucked me over because it fucks with your mind. You know, you're like in daylight there's so many noises and then i'm sure i closed the curtain i didn't want to know anything about the outside world yeah you're just having this own thing but he got so he got into bed around nine and you're still feeling it right and now now it's coming it's like it's a little bit like coming you know coming down and i started laughing hysterically just laughing out of just cracking up <laughs> oh, so funny yeah, yeah, yeah. I will never do it again. That was really funny, right? And he's like, literally, just straight face. Yeah, you're done. No, no, no. That was really funny, baby. Like for real. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, oh, that was really fun. Well, I just recorded ten minutes of you doing a monologue. So that whole time that I thought I was just laying down, just I was talking to myself. I did an entire monologue of like my childhood trauma and how the <laughs> world is fucked up. Like it was like, it was right after Trump got elected. So it, oh. I went in with the whole Trump and racism and yes. social justice. Like there is a video that when my husband divorces me, it will come out <laughs> of me <laughs> high as fuck. Just like shit about like famous people, like these people are fucking trash and they're like fakes and you know, like, they, they pretend black lives matter, but bullshit. They don't give yeah. a fuck. Like there was an actual video. <laughs> so in and like literally like telling it all about every single person that has done me wrong. Right. Like people that betray me, friends that said they were my friends. Girl, there is a 10 minute video 
of he just record i didn't even know he was recording me that's and coming I'm- out after your first oscar <laughs> that's coming out and you know it's true <laughs> God, no, I don't want to be like Hillary Swank. <laughs> Hillary Swank, you know, she won the first Oscar and then she divorced her husband. <laughs> I don't want to- he probably she probably has a tape of him if if she's the one that divorced him. <laughs> well, you know, I, that always freaks me out. Like, you know, once you like become like successful, yes. it's like, well, bye bye, everyone that has ever helped me and supported me, which in my case is literally my husband and my son. Right, <laughs> like, right, like, right, I right. Never, I would never, but he's like. Yeah, you just like went all in on America, Trump, racism, social justice, Hollywood, and your childhood. (laughs) So you probably made a lot of great points, honestly. (laughs) The laughing came from like because I let whatever was in my subconscious, I let it all out. Yeah. Somehow. (laughs) Like literally, I could not believe I was like, don't you ever. You have to send that to me immediately and erase it. He's like, no, I'm going to have. So I still, I don't have a copy of it. It's on his phone. Okay. It's on his phone. And God help me. Like if I, you know, when, when I make it, like, you know, it is, is he's going to blackmail, blackmail me. <laughs> like I know for a fact, I'm going to have to pay some sort of money for this video. Hopefully no one will ever see it. And if you do, oh, well, I'm already rich and famous. So what are oh, you going to well. do? try and cancel her people it ain't happening not today not tomorrow not the next day oh my god I I literally like one once I was like done I just texted my friend I was like hey bro that fucked me up yeah like that was not he's like what how much do you take I'm like half of it what I'm like okay everyone with the what and a half He's like, no, I only take a little piece of like little bites here. And I'm like, where the fuck did you buy this? Like, like, yeah, who, who's making? Because now they make them like tiny and potent. Is that yeah. like, he was like, no, the, the smaller they have, the more concentrated they are. You have to like, you know, take it bye, bye, bye. And then blah, blah. And I'm like, and this guy is like, uh-huh. I'm telling you twice my size. Yeah. And he takes little bites. And I took half of it. Half of it. And he Let's- takes the little bites. And you took half. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, for me, that was like, like if I, if, you know, going back to like any, trying to find like a wild night, I was like, yeah, I guess. But then those nights don't mean anything to me. <laughs> I know. Cause because they involve like, they have ex boyfriends that are fucking trash. So yeah. I want to talk about them and give them time, you know? No, this story was perfect. It's so good that you had your support system, like you had your husband to come home and take it because that could have been a way different night. You know what I mean? And it was, you're able to like laugh about it now, but like imagine if he wasn't home and then you had your son like home alone no. with you, you know? If I would have. If I would have done it the day before or the day after, it would have been over because my yeah. husband works. At that time, he was a bartender. Like, uh-huh. we raised a kid on tip, tips and gigs, honey. Yes, yes. And he was working overnight. But that night, he was actually doing a, a day gig. So he was able Good to job. come home, you know, in the afternoon. But I was, it was, it would have been truly fucked. Like, I would have, yeah. I would have called 911 on myself. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been like, come arrest me. It's over. Yeah. You know, like, please uh, take care of my son. And uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Now, since that day, have you ever touched edibles? No, there's no, no brownie near this house. We not, not good ones, bad ones, unicorn ones. It doesn't matter. It I do not. It, no, it's not happening. I don't, I haven't done weed ever since. Yeah. It's, it's kind of sad because. I don't know like weed is fun and like yeah. you know like I do I have a CBD oil I get really bad cramps uh-huh. and, like get really bad so I CBD I'll do you know but like I stay away from the THC and yeah I couldn't do it like it was it was traumatizing and I will never I don't think I I don't think I'll ever do an edible ever again <laughs> yeah I I don't blame you when it hits you that hard I mean I can't even imagine to take a bite of it. And then when you turn a corner, you're already feeling it. That's not like, that's it's some just strong shit. A bit. And then when I hear this guy that is over 200 pounds telling me he only takes a little bite, like a corner, 
-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh, I truly like, I OD on this brownie. Like, yes. That's amazing. Well, that, that really was truly, it was a wild day turned wild night. I imagine all I can picture is the two of you. Cause I, I think we're in the same neighborhood actually. Yeah. In Astoria. A town baby. Right. Um, <laughs> but I just pictured the two of you like running into each other, like a week later and him just being like, Hey, Suni. And you'd be like, don't talk to me. <laughs> he laughed so hard. He was, he, he made fun of me all the time. Like he was just like, you know, like, Oh, you want a brownie? You want a brownie? Oh, look at, uh, he called me something, uh, um, oh my God, he called me uh, dangerous mama or something mama, like, like he was like, kind of like, uh, uh, party, party mom. It was, okay, oh. party mom is here. And I'm like, shut up. I just wanted to relax. Yeah, you're like, meanwhile, you're like the most like with it mom. And then you just have this one day and that turns your whole reputation upside down. Um. Well, other than being a party mom, you have a pretty great reputation as a comedian and as an actress. You've been on Nora from Queens. You've been on Billions. You have a hysterical comedy reel. You're a hysterical stand-up comedian. I wanted to ask you, because you book, baby. You're a booker. And- I, I, I work very hard, and it's been a lot of years without any bookings, thanks yeah. to the pandemic and yes. others. So I've been working hard for over a decade and thank God some things have fallen on my lap and come, go my way, but a lot yeah. of thousands of things have not and we're still here. And that's what people don't realize. Like there's so many people who get defeated after two or three no's. And I always say, I go, this is the industry that you've chosen to be in. So you got to take the no's, 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 no's with the one yes. And the no's, thousands. no's, no's thousands of no's otherwise if you if you feel like you can't handle the no's then this is not the the path for you but you get some you get some pretty good yeses and you get your name out there how do you feel now that we are in this kind of uh zoom audition and blue jean audition rooms how do you feel um as like a new yorker not being able to go do in-person auditions anymore but still being in the heart of it I honestly don't miss it because mm-hmm. honey, that, that, that hustle of me getting out of Queens, going into the city to do a, a couple of auditions. Sometimes it was two or three in one day and then coming back again to get my son from school. Yeah. You have that going, extra element of a child. Yeah. Sure. Going into rehearsal and then doing shows at night. Like I would, I would be on the go nonstop. Like sometimes I will forget to eat. I didn't have time to shower. When I got home, I would be like so tired. It would be like three days. Oh, I haven't showered. Great. Like it was, it was truly, it was truly exhausting. And I couldn't, I couldn't stop the train because I knew if I didn't get on that train of the hustle of auditioning and, and keeping, keep doing the other things, I would have not gotten the few things that I was able to gather, the few wins, right. because it's that big of a competition out there. It's that it big is. of, um, y- you know, it's, it's just, it is, it is, it is, the numbers are insane of how many people audition for the one spot. Yeah. So you have to, so the audition is an opportunity to just put yourself in front of the people in front of the right people. So they, they remember you for something else, even if you don't book this one. So I don't, so being at home now and be being able to do it from home, it, it has been like, honestly, a blessing. Like yeah. if I have to, I went, actually, I went back in last week was my first audition back in the room. Yeah. And I felt so weird. I was like, you're looking at my legs, like, <laughs> like I'm wearing pants. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like I was like, ew, like they're looking for the body, you know, because yeah. you're like right here, medium here, frame. Yeah. yeah, so I forgot how to act with my legs. Like I was standing like, <laughs> like a little kangaroo. Like I literally forgot how my legs worked. Right, right, right. Well, I th- and it's also this interesting evolution because now, <laughs> because we can do everything virtually, uh, everybody in New York and LA where those used to be the two places where you'd have to go to quote unquote, make it now that's not the case. So where it is beneficial to us as New Yorkers to be able to audition from home, everybody from every town across the U S who maybe has a little glimmer of talent can also be thrown into those numbers. There you go. Exactly. So now the competition 
it's even higher than mm -hmm. what it was before exactly because of that yeah. and then you add on to that the instagram and Tw tiktok stars that didn't go <laughs> the route that you know a lot of us have to go which was a legit you know awesome. like you had to train and you had to put in the work in the rooms and you had to like you know really take classes and and, and study the craft and it yeah. was now it's it, it is a whole amalgamation of you know like people from all sides and all places so it it it's been hard because i i haven't had like unfortunately the past since since 2019 it has been there's no bookings like there's right. no bookings because even though i was already like before the pandemic i was exactly where where I, I was supposed to be after working so hard for a decade, right. like, okay, now my name is kind of like the casting directors can't remember my yeah. name and who I am. And then, and then the pandemic happened and I, it all crumbled down. Who is she? Mm -hmm. What, what's going on? Like everything was like, a, everything erased, all the hard work was erased. Right. But now it, it felt like I had to start. Oh, that's how it's feeling, right? Like I I'm starting over again. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm at home, I'm not hustling in the train, you know, on the train back and forth, and, you know, <laughs> and like worrying about how I, I walk into a room, <laughs> but, but here we are with less bookings because it's that many people now. Yeah. But you also do stand up comedy. And so that is a, uh, that is a huge leg up because I know you were saying about TikTok stars and all these people who go viral, but a lot of the time. They, be, they gain a lot of popularity, but then they can't hold an audience when they're performing live. And that is the skill you have. You can hold an audience, you can make a crowd laugh and you're, you produce your own show. Yeah, yeah. Like stand-up has truly saved me throughout the pandemic. I started uh, doing the Zoom shows, you know, uh -huh. the online shows during the quarantine. Of course. And, and it was, it felt so, it was like, it was therapy. It truly yeah. helped me digest everything that was going on, you know, the sadness and the, all the worries and everything. And once the, you know, the vaccine came and the places started to open, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put my eggs on this basket. I'm going to, yeah. cause I used to do improv sketch and stand up, like all of them and weaving Mixed. them. Yeah. Uh, you know, doing, doing a variety uh, uh, of things in variety shows. It, yeah. it doesn't matter. You, you want a characters. I, I, I bring I got them. You want a, <laughs> jokes. I'll bring the jokes, but, but that can stretch you out thin, uh, you know, and, 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 and truly like stand up is something that you have all control of it. Like you, you write the jokes. If you want to produce your own show, you are in charge of that show and how that show is going to go and who, what people are going to be on it. And I was, I truly, I don't want to say like, I, I regret not, not like, because I could have, I couldn't, I couldn't just follow the stand up route earlier when my son was younger, because stand up is a late night gig. Yeah. gig. Like more than improv and sketch, stand up is a late night gig. Like you and have to solo because you you do have the people in the community, but the, with improv at least you have your team and you guys can hang out after. With with in, with stand up, you have to grind it out. This open mic, this open mic, this open mic. Yeah, yeah. The open mic solo as a woman late at night. It was it was very it was very intimidating and, yes. and stressful. I did it for for a little bit and I would come home and cry because the jokes are so misogynistic. No one gave a fuck about, you know, you being a mother, like now, you know, finally there are actual um, famous comedian moms out there. Like it yeah. used to be like, you know, no one, no one, no woman, no, no funny woman could talk about their kid or their child that they were a mother and now, you see like every famous person that has a kid is just talking about it and it's, it's like, it's awesome. fine. But when I, when I started it over a decade ago, it was like, what? Like, yeah. why are you not thinking about dick and pussy? Like, yeah. I'm like, I still can talk about dick and pussy, but like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, multifaceted, so, okay? <laughs> like, I can definitely tell you about <laughs> uh, dick and pussy, but, but it was, it was a very, it, it was a very um, intimidating um fields I imagine yeah yeah an intimidating circle to to mm -hmm. step in and 
and and improv was a little bit more welcoming exactly because that because it's a teamwork yeah. kind of like environment and with sketch is the same thing but now after the pandemic and now that my son is older heck i feel a little bit more uh comfortable i have to leave him with someone or if yeah. i have to even leave him at home i'm i'm hosting a show in queens and i'm like literally like 10 blocks away i'm like maybe yeah. i'll be i'll be back in an hour and he's yeah. fine because he's in yeah. middle school and now we can do things and feel freer, I guess. Yeah. And you have constant communication. You get left alone. I feel like when, when we were younger, I you get left alone at like eight and a half, nine years old. And all you have is the house phone. Nobody's got like cell phones. You can't call. Now your parents can see where you're at at all times, where your phone is. So um, right. it, it's I mean, I really hope thing. now this doesn't get me in trouble with social services. No, they don't listen. Social services, they don't listen. And if they do, they listen, um, they guilty pleasure listen. <laughs> they don't oh, tell the other right. secret service agents that they that they listen to this. Oh, I, no. I think you're fine. <laughs> listen, I've only, I've only done it once. He's always in touch with me via his iPad. Everything is cool. I and think you have more to laugh. worry about about that video that your husband has in Secret Service. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Um, so SUNY, I have one more question for you before I ask you to plug your social medias. 2022 is coming up. You are the last episode of the season. I'm so honored to have you. And I just want to know what it what are your goals? What are you looking forward to? What do you see yourself in, in a year from now? Where do you see yourself career-wise? OMG, like, I want to have, like, a freaking TV special. Mm -hmm. Do, like, a late night, you know, bring my 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 jokes to a late night show. Yeah. That's, like, a dream of mine after working. This past two years, I've been fully dedicated to my stand-up grind and working those jokes, so... Yeah, like having my jokes uh, being showcased on a late night show. I, I've been working really hard this past two years on my jokes and doing stand up like full time. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I would love to see the, the fruits of that labor next year. And I think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm also writing my own pilot. So congratulations. I, right. Like that is so hard. It's such a big accomplishment. People don't understand how yeah. hard it is to write a pilot but i i've been on my writing bag like writing yeah. the jokes writing pilots so next year i think i'm gonna focus on that yeah and 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 i am really looking forward to it like i am i'm very excited like i'm like the whole thing of of the pre-pandemic when it was like i have to go audition an audition and hopefully they'll like me hopefully they'll hire me i hope i am what they want i yeah. don't care like i yeah. don't like right now, I'm like, your loss. If you yes. don't, if you don't want to hire me, is your loss. Cause Absolutely. I got it. I got yeah. what you whatever you want, I got it. So now I'm just going in with like, this is what I have to offer, kind of um attitude. And 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 um I'm really looking forward to that and in, in 2022. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you on a late night show delivering those hot mama party mama. Oh jokes. no. <laughs> um, that's okay. It's actually very appropriate that that he calls you the party mama. We call the listeners here the party god squad. So to end, yeah, that's what the, we call the listeners. So um the party god squad supports the party mama. So party god squad, follow SUNY. SUNY, tell the party god squad where they can follow yes. you. Yes. Twitter, SUNY Reyes, and Instagram, SUNY Reyes, because we are bilingual, baby. Yes, that's amazing, amazing, amazing. SUNY, you are a dream guest. You are a dream person. You are so talented, so funny, and um, I cannot wait to see what the next year brings for you. Thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. You're awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're awesome. We will talk soon, okay? Okay. Bye.